Hey everybody, Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com. When we get into the month of September, that can only mean one thing. That the start of the hockey season is here, or will soon be beginning soon. And that means tryouts. Descriptive words used to describe tryouts would be stressful, nerve-wracking, tense, and anxious. I have to admit, when I was a player, I was nervous for every tryout I ever had to go through. So if you're feeling this way, it's totally normal. But is there a way to reduce or eliminate all of those negative, non-productive thoughts? The answer is absolutely. So let's get to it. Here are the five tips and secrets to guarantee you a much stronger showing during your next trial. Everything I'm about to share with you is information or insights I've gathered over the last 30 years from the perspective of a player, a coach, an off-ice skills instructor, a youth hockey committee member, program director, a parent of two players, and yes, as an evaluator each fall for some youth hockey level. So I think I got a handle on it. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications or you'll be missing out. Tip number one, preparation. Preparing for a solid tryout starts well before you hit the ice. The last thing you want to be doing 30 minutes before your first tryout is to be scrambling around the rink trying to find a forgotten elbow pad or glove. Get all of your gear laid out and check to make sure that you have it all. Replace worn out laces, tape your sticks, locate your mouth guard and neck guard if required, and any additional things you might need at the rink like a stone, scissors, or screwdriver. That's another thing. Tighten all the screws on your helmet as they always seem to loosen. Make sure your skates are sharpened, have a water bottle and snack handy in case you get hungry. This little bit of extra planning, getting to the rink early, reduces stress levels and puts you in a calmer state of mind, where now all you have to do is focus on your on-ice execution. Tip number two, understand the trial process. The trial process is a challenging one, as it's difficult for youth hockey associations to organize enough qualified men and women to sign up to be a tryout evaluator. Evaluators do get paid in most cases, not much, but they do get paid, and meals are provided. Most, if not all, evaluators coach in the association or neighboring associations. It's common practice for nearby hockey associations to exchange coaching members for the tryout process. Many parents have players that play, but rarely is a parent allowed to evaluate at the level their kid plays at. So this means that the odds of anyone knowing who you are are slim. So you have to find a way to get noticed. For larger associations, there may be up to 10 teams per level. So that's a lot of bodies that evaluators have to rank. Day one, the evaluator's objective is to get players into three buckets, top, bottom, and middle. It's pretty easy to separate the top 10 and bottom 10 players from the group. The remaining tryout dates determine who the remaining roster spots will go to on both groups at opposite ends of the spectrum. The rest of the players make up all the middle teams. The tryout process is never perfect and always is scrutinized by association members. But all I can tell you in all the years I evaluated any level of tryouts, by the end of the process, players end up on the correct team. Sure, there's always a few players that easily could play up on the higher level team, but by the end, players play their way onto the right team. Tip number three, don't be a drill buster. Nothing frustrates coaches more than when they explain a drill and the first player or group of players do it wrong. Pay attention to what the coach is saying. If you don't understand, ask for another explanation. If you still don't get it, the best advice I can give you is to get to the back of the line and start watching the players before you. Don't be a drill buster. That's not good. Tip number four, body language speaks loudly. The one guarantee in hockey is that you're going to make mistakes and things won't always go your way. For many players, when they miss a shot or are off on a pass, they'll verbally voice their displeasure or physically assault the ice by banging their stick blade down violently, leaving the ice saying, what the heck did I do to deserve that? Just so you know, you don't get high rankings for that type of behavior. Other forms of expression, as you see here, when things don't go as planned, are also viewed as being a negative. And when you get enough negatives next to your name, that means you don't make the team you want. Number five, trade secrets. What I'm about to share with you are tryout trade secrets that have been passed down generation to generation. Not many players ever hear about these closely guarded secrets until their hockey career is over and it's too late. These remaining critical intangibles I offer only to the brave, as these secrets are saved for those of you who do almost anything to make the team you've targeted. 
The best part of what I'm about to reveal to you is that you don't have to be ridiculously skilled to execute these final techniques. These finishing factors typically tip the scale one way or the other when evaluators are making last minute decisions to fill the remaining roster spots. Implement these impactful strategies and the odds of you making the team you want skyrocket. Secret number one, stand out from the crowd. Every association requires players to wear a numbered jersey or penny. This is the only way to differentiate players from one another for evaluators. But is this the only way to separate players? An easy way to stand out from the crowd is to wear two different sock colors or skate laces. I remember on several occasions during the tryout process talking about a player and not referring to him or her by their number, but rather by saying something like, I really like the kid with the two different colored socks. Remember, most evaluators don't know who you are, so think about ways you can stand out from the crowd. The last two secrets I'm going to share with you have to do with two separating factors for players that if executed enough during tryouts, they almost guarantee themselves a spot on the team they're shooting for. The first is forechecking and backchecking. You want to be as disruptive as possible out there. You have to be quick on pucks in order to force players to make decisions faster than they want to or anticipate. This creates turnovers and hopefully scoring chances for you or your line mate. If you're on the defensive side of the puck, know what your assignment is and mark your target. Head on a swivel and make sure that you're in between the player you're covering and the net you're protecting. This forces players to skate, pass, and shoot through you in order to get access to your net. If you really want to impress evaluators, this last secret is for you. Blocking shots. You want to easily move up in the rankings? Start blocking shots. When the last couple of roster spots are being discussed and who's in contention, evaluators typically have two to five players under consideration, otherwise known as comparable players. This video is long enough, so let me make this really simple for you. There's one roster spot left, there are two players being considered. Both have equal ability, are similar in size, and are great kids both on and off the ice. The only difference, and I mean the only difference, that's how similar these two finalists are, is that one player is a puck magnet and blocks every shot that comes his way, and the other doesn't. Who do you think makes the team? So now you know how to improve your chances to make the team you want. Implement these tips and secrets and start separating yourself from the competition. Thanks for watching, best of luck, and I'll see you next time.